Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to talk about the quantum engine we have recently proposed, uh, which we call, uh, I do not see. Hello. Do what? Ah, no, the latest. I don't want to. Oh, oh. oh. okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, that uh, we call uh, the value engine. So, the outline of the talk is this one. First, I will introduce the simple idea behind the engine. Uh, the mechanism we propose requires a very flexible system, so we will briefly speak about the natural system to realize this idea. Then we will see uh, the setup and the experimental and theoretical results, and of course, uh, we will be out with some uh, conclusions. Um, to introduce uh, the, the idea, I think it is useful to remember the concepts of work and fit. In the classical case and at the macroscopic level, we describe a change in the thermo thermodynamic state of the system as a change in the relevant thermodynamical variables such as the pressure, the volume, and uh, the temperature. In that case, work is the energy change induced by the variation of a mechanical para parameter, for example, a, a gas that changes its, uh, its volume and pushes a piston, which in turn can move uh, some gear. And heat is the energy exchange with a thermal gas, like that you see in a third like that. In the quantum case and at the macroscopic level, uh, a change in uh, the quantum state can be uh, achieved by changing the energy levels or the occupations or populations of those energy levels. Then uh, following a liquid definition of work and heat in the quantum realm, uh, the useful energy of work or work is related to a change in the energy levels by keeping the occupations at fixed, and heat mm -hmm. is uh, related to a change in the occupations by keeping the energy levels at uh, fixed. We can think in um, an example, the one-dimensional quantum harmonic oscillator. In that case, the energies of the system depend uh, linearly on the frequency. So if we want to change these uh, levels, we need to compress or expand the stuff. So intuit uh, if this is quite intuitive, work is related to expansion and compression of uh, the stuff. In the case of heat, we want to change the population. And if the system uh, follows multiple uh, Boltzmann distribution, then we have a single parameter here in order to change the population, which is uh, the uh, temperature that is uh, we change the temperature by coupling the system to a bus, and uh, that is the same as in the classical case. But in the quantum world, particles can be either uh, bosonic or fermionic. And then if we want to change these occupations, we can, of course, uh, change the temperature. But in principle, we could also change this line here from minus for a uh, boson to plus for that. So what we are uh, noticing here is that uh, heat in um, quantum heat can be associated, of course, with a change in temperature, but could also be associated with a change in a uh, static. But uh, everyone here knows that, uh, that the particles with integer spin are uh, bosons and particles with half integer spin are fermions. That is known as a spin uh, statistic theorem and was proven by Pauli in the 40s, giving a, a relationship between the statistics and the, the spin, which is the fundamental property of the particle. So the main question is how can we achieve a change in a statistics? And the answer is using ultra cold Fermi gases in what is known as the DC to BCS uh, crossover. Um, very briefly, ultra cold gases, either uh, fermionic or bosonic, have two very uh, important features that turn them into an uh, amazing platform to anybody physics, to think in quantum information applications, or to do anything, for example. First, uh, in ultra cold atom experiments, uh, people can tune the interparticle interaction by changing the magnetic field. And uh, second, people can control the confinement in a very precise way. 
from uh, now on, we are going to focus on fermi gases. Um, these, uh, as for example, six lithium or potassium 40. In some slides, the experiments I will show you were done with six lithium. And uh, we are going to think that the gas uh, has two different particles, two different kinds of fermions that we are going to represent with these blue and the red particles. And we are also going to think that we have the same amount of blue and red particles. This is known as binary fermion. In this system, by changing the magnetic field, we can uh, smoothly go between uh, two regimes. For some values of the magnetic field, the blue and uh, the red um, fermions are strongly attracted. They uh, form a small size uh, molecule or a pair with a large binding energy. Here, if we exchange two of these molecules, we are exchanging two blue fermions and two red fermions. The system takes a minus from each one of those exchange, and therefore it's symmetric under, under the exchange of the molecules as a whole or as a complete entity. That means these molecules are bosons or more properly speaking, composite bosons made up of fermions of different energies. For other values of the magnetic field, uh, the interaction, the attraction between the blue and the red fermion becomes weaker and weaker. The size of the pair increases, and then the fermion starts to spin show. And that means or translates into two things. First, the molecule breaks, and the binding energy goes to zero. And second, the gas is strongly interacting because one fermion is able to see all the remaining fermions in the gas. This is the BEC to BCS crossover, and it can be crossed or passed in an uh, adiabatic and reversible. For us, the most important point is that when the fermions are in the molecular state, they form these composite bosons that follow uh, both Einstein statistics. And then the ground state of the system at zero temperature will have all the pairs in the ground state, which will be a common state. When the molecule breaks, then uh, the fermions, uh, the, the fermionic character of the particles arises, and uh, the atoms follow fermi dirac studies. So the ground state of the system, we have one fermion of each uh, species in each one of the energy levels up to the uh, fermi energy. So in a very uh, simplified picture, we can, by uh, moving or changing the magnetic field, we can induce the fermionization or the bosonization of the system. So that means that the uh, change in statistics we were looking for can be realized with ultra cold fermi gases in uh, this uh, process. This is the scheme of the experimental setup. We have a magnetic and optical trap giving a total um, anisotropic harmonic trap. Uh, the gas is this red ellipsoid here. And in uh, the experiments, we can change the trap frequencies. That means we can open or compress uh, um, the trap. We can change the interparticle interaction by uh, changing the magnetic field. That means we can break or rebuild uh, the molecules. And we can also change the number of particles. And all of these variables, we can change with a very high uh, control. This is the cycle we propose. We start at point, uh, on the molecular with a molecular condensate at point A. We compress the trap in the first world stroke from A to B. Then uh, from B to C, we break the molecules and we effectively change the statistics. Then uh, from C to B, we expand the gas in the new uh, world stroke. And finally, we close the cycle, cycle with a new uh, magnetic field sweep that reveals the molecules from B to A. At each one of these points, we uh, get this kind of absorption images. And from those absorption images, we can extract the uh, thermodynamic uh, information, such as, for example, the number of particles. And with that, we can uh, compute the energy. Once we have the energy at each uh, point, we can compute the energy for each one to show. Uh, we can compute the the work uh, the work at at each work stroke and to the uh, energy difference 
um, obtained when we induce this uh, change in statistics, we call the Pauli energy because the underlying mechanism is Pauli dog. And finally, uh, we can um, quantify the performance of the engine with the work output and the uh, efficiency. Um, to show that these uh, changes statistics can uh, power the engine, we uh, calculate the energy stored in the trap uh, when we induce the fermentation. These are the time points and the uh, experimental points on the theoretical curve here. We compare with other two strokes. This orange one is also made at low temperature, but uh, staying in the uh, bosonic regime, so there is no effective change in statistics. And this other one is made in uh, the athermal regime, uh, in which both uh, Fermilat and both Einstein statistics should be uh, close to the Maxwell Boltzmann one. In all the cases from the theory and from the experiments, we see that the energy difference is here when we induce the change in uh, statistics. This is the work output and the efficiency for a fixed compression ratio and as a function of the number of particles. We can see that the uh, Pauli engine outperforms an engine running completely on the bosonic side. The efficiency of the Pauli energy, the, the Pauli engine, is about seven percent, and the efficiency of the engine running in, on the bosonic side is one point three percent. These uh, experimental results are in agreement with uh, results of other group in the United States, uh, and that, uh, they were using a, a bosonic working. Group. Uh, ah, two more things here. We uh, calculate the scaling of the work output with respect to the number of particles. For both engines, uh, we have a scaling that is higher than the classical one. And we could also compute a bound uh, for the work output and for the efficiency that are these purple ones and are given by what we would obtain if we were really able to turn uh, N ideal uh, fermions into n over 2 ideal a uh, Here we can see the work output and the efficiency for a fixed number of particles and as a function of the compression ratio. For example, for a compression ratio higher than a 2, we have an efficiency higher than 10%. And for uh, the maximum compression ratio we can achieve in the uh, experimental setup, we have an efficiency of uh, 25%. And just for uh, having a comparison point, the efficiency of nowadays cars is between 20 and uh, 30. Uh, finally, because the idea of an engine is to run uh, it over and over again, we check that the Pauli uh, engine or the Pauli cycle is stable or, uh, if we run it uh, five times before significant atom losses spoil uh, the work output. The efficiency is more or less constant, around uh, 7%, but uh, the work output uh, deviates from the expected one. Uh, so what is, to sum up, what we did was to uh, replace the traditional heating and cooling stroke of a heat engine by a change in quantum statistics. Uh, we obtained an efficiency of up to 25% in the um, experimentally accessible range of the compression ratio. And we show the quantum character of the engine by comparing it to an engine completely running on the uh, bosonic side and also uh, to a thermal uh, stroke. Uh, and the main conclusion of uh, our work is that statistics could be a, a useful uh, thermodynamic resource for work production. And uh, because we are relying on quantum statistics, there is no classical equivalent for this. Uh, I did not start my chronometer, so I don't know how. Do I have a little bit of time? Uh, uh, but for questions or for me? Okay, uh, this is the complete team. Uh, we are uh, some people working in the experiments Jennifer, uh, Arthur, and, and Sian uh, from Kaiserslautern University. And the theory part we did in collaboration with Eric uh, Lutz from Stuttgart University and uh, Thomas Mosti and Kirti and me from uh, Okinawa in uh, Japan.
Uh, we have some a lot of open questions and some ideas to keep working. And uh, if you uh, would like to see the paper, you can send this to our you our talk. And uh, thank you. Very much. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have time for some questions. If there are any, uh, yeah. Gary. This. Is I think more of like an experimental optimization question, but um, you were able to get sort of five strokes before you know atom losses eventually start to kill you. Do you know what, um, how do you know if there are any plans to improve this? And if so, do you know anything about how? Uh, no, I was actually thinking that that can be something uh, to apply to quantum control, over the, for example, to design somehow some. The recapturing of these uh, atoms that are really but yes, I think that is a uh, very nice thing. But also actually to prepare the state because uh, all the statistics is uh, of, of the, let's, uh, the the experimental point. We need to prepare a state with very similar number of particles, and of course we have a bias there. So for preparing the state with the same number of particles, that's uh, something that we, I think one of the most other questions? One. Do you know what's the dissipative uh, mechanism that you have? This loss of particles or something else? That is a very good question, and uh, uh, we don't know. I have one quick question. So, I mean, you essentially uh, realized like an auto cycle here, I guess. Would you care? Or at least you have very clean distinction between what is work, what you're calling heat. Right? We can do, I, I don't think we have a very clear distinction between what is work. Uh, we kind of did a parallelism, which is a change in statistics and heat. But I think more work is needed to really say that it's heat or, or it's yeah. work. So I think this is why I was going to wonder, like, if you change to something like a Carnot cycle where you're not doing a change in the frequency and then a change in statistics, you're doing them at the same time, then do you have a clean distinction between what you can characterize as work and heat? I guess maybe not. No, yeah. no, but for example, uh, uh, okay. uh, we uh, did, for example, an analogy with the Pauli, the auto cycle, and here, for example, you can see the uh, PV diagram, and uh, this looks like an auto cycle. Mm -hmm. But for that, you actually need to consider new variables because most of the people in the ultra cold uh, atom community use the volume of the cloud, and the volume of the cloud uh, is supposed not to be a, a, a thermodynamic variable. And then you need to go to the harmonic uh, volume and the harmonic pressure that was proposed by some uh, authors, and then you can do a parallelism with the other cycle. But we don't have we don't have a we don't couple the system to a bat, so we cannot uh, define the same example. Yeah. 